Hello, welcome to The Freak Show, Bumpy McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I continue with my Let's Play of Battle Brothers. Episode 6 is upon us. We have decided, and by we I mostly mean me, I have decided that I am going to take up the caravan mission. But before we do that, I noticed a small, slightly disturbing thing. The Ferlangan militia are moving around, and I don't know why. Oh, there's more orc scouts coming. Alright, well before we do that, everybody's healed, everybody is repaired... I believe everybody is outfitted properly as well. So what I believe we should do is, is the militia going to fight the scouts? I'd like to, to do battle with the militia and the scouts again, if at all possible. But it's looking like that's not going to happen. Not sure why the militia ran away so far, but they did. Well, we're going to do battle with some more orcs, I guess. And, ooh, there's a lot more this time, so this could get a little bit messy. Maybe. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Alright, I think I'm going to move back here, and I'm going to try to hold the line across this. So, we'll see. We'll see how it plays. We will see how it plays. I'm going to wait quite a few turns. I mean, this could be a really, really nasty level for us, but we'll see. We shall see. Backward, folks. All right, Pathkeeper, you get to come on over here. And I suppose everybody's going to kind of move back into their general positioning. All right, so what I want is probably like a spearman, a melee, a spearman, a melee, a spearman. And that should be able to hold the line pretty well. That's going to be the plan, anyway. Whether it comes to fruition or not remains to be seen. Alright, Spearman... Spearman, Melee, Spearman, Melee, Spearman. So, we'll go here. We'll try to get everybody into position, but I don't know. There's a lot of orcs. I mean, if we can hold the line, fantastic. If not, well, we're going to be having some issues. Some issues and some wet tissues. Because there will be a lot of uh, dead individuals. But we'll see. We shall see. Alright, our spearman is ready to move. And move he shall. And our big double-handed sword guy is going to back up. Oh, I think I might have just moved into where I needed to be. That's a bit awkward. Alright, so... Spear, melee, spear, melee, spear. I'm okay with this still. It's not that big of an issue. Come on down here. We're going to end our turn. Going to step back one more spot. And we're going to await our turn. He should be able to move soon. We're going to wait once again. Alright, he's going to have to back up. And I think I'm going to end his turn. And... Spear, melee, spear, yeah. Sorry guys, I know I keep saying it. I just want to make sure I have it down and I don't like mess it up. Which is very possible. It is very possible that I will mess it up at some point. Okay. And the orcs shall move closer, but little do they know we are planning for this exact movement that they are going to throw at us. Well, we're going to hope. We're going to really, really, really hope that uh, we're actually strong enough to do this. Looks like only a couple of them have shields. This guy's a little bit more heavily armored than the rest, though. Which is a little, little off-putting. I'm not going to lie, it's a little bit off-putting. Alright, looks like we have to take some shots. Let's do a 39% on him and finish him. Oh, we hit the armor though. Okay, we're going to go here and we're going to end the turn. And we're going to try it again with good old Odie. And down he goes. There's only seven orcs remaining at this point. He is out of movement and power. He doesn't have the power. Alright, 23 or 29 or in the back. Ah, uh, well, I guess 29 is the better shot, so we'll take it. Not nah, that we're going to necessarily hit it, but that's okay. Alright, it is the new turn. 
we are going to prepare ourselves for a battle and hope for the very best. I like our current positioning. I'm hoping that it actually goes well for us. 25, 15, 35, 20. Let's do that. There's a pretty good chance we hit something. Nope, we hit nothing. I said there was a chance. Fairly good chance with the two blocking and him behind. I mean, the probability we would actually land some attack there was relatively high. Ooh, we have one more individual coming up of the ranks. And I actually wouldn't mind shooting him, but I think I'm going to do the same thing. The fire and totally miss the young orc in the back. It didn't hit anybody in front of him either. Not super great. It's going to end his turn. We're going to try to make our spear wall of death and hope that everything pans out. It doesn't look like they're going to close with us this time, though. So, that's a little unfortunate. All right. Young Orc at 46%, and we missed all of those shots. It's okay. We've landed some 20s. We can handle the 46 misses. It's when we start getting the 75s and the 90 and the 85s. That's when I start getting like... Uh, uh, with the RNG stuff. The R and OG whiz. All right. Next, we're going to wait it out. Wait it out. And you guessed it. Wait it out. The Orcs are going to make their move. And first up... First back down, all right. Very good start. 68% chance, a little disappointing. Wow, okay. I'm calling malarkey on that one, but it's okay. I can call malarkey. I can call malarkey. This guy's in close and get smacked back. And once again, the spear wall is holding the line. I hope our spears hold up too. That's the other thing. Oh, very nice shot. Oh, well, we missed this guy, but we hit the guy in the back. I'll take that. I will most assuredly take that. And is he going to move? No. Alright, so our first line of defense has been breached. Has been breachified. Has been breached. Alright, we're going to miss our 60s. Hey, there we go. We landed one. Alright. Oh, no. The knockback failed and we got stunned. Alright, well. The good news is there's a 60-something percent chance for us to hit him. And the bad news is we failed that chance. And we are looking a little worse for the wear. Hmm. Can do that. I can't wait again, can I? I'm gonna end the turn. I'm gonna try a move here, which might. No, no, I hit the wrong button. Oh no, I wanted to knock him back. Well, that's a bit unfortunate. All right. Well, we're gonna smack him, break his armor, and it looks like we are in. Kind of dire straits at this point. Hmm. We're not totally out of it yet, but still. We're going to wait. It looks like he does get to move first. We can ignore the shield. 74% chance, and we hit him in the head. And we broke his helmet and hurt him, but it wasn't enough to finish him. And unfortunately, our axe user is now wounded. Well, stunned. I wouldn't say wounded. And it looks like we are not going to have a good time. Let's do shield wall, and can we still attack after? It looks like we can. 55%, get handled. And he just moved into place, but didn't attack. Oh gosh, oh. That was a move, that scared me. I'm like, no way he makes it there. There's a hole in my defense, what am I going to do? All right, we have a 51 and a 36. We're gonna go for the 51 smack, did not work. We'll try it again. And we stunned him, that's a good sign. That guy's a little bit hurt. We're going to wait, though, before we make our move. And our archers are going to be able to do some damage. Yeah. Good misses, guys. Good misses. Oh, come on. There we go. Another good miss. Actually, that one hit. My bad. There we go. A little bit of damage going out. I like it. 82%. And can we finish it? 87? Yeah, we can. That is sweet, sweet, nice style, folks. Sweet, sweet, nice style. I believe all of our archer-type people have made their move. I am going to do the same. And I am going to use our shield to hopefully deter his attack. Oh, well, okay. It wasn't his attack after all. Downside is they are on the high ground right now. There is an upside to this. Upside is, this guy's head is gone, because I'm a boss and I knew it. 
The other upside is if we can land the split, it's gonna do work. And double decapitation, maybe single decapitation, I don't know. But it messed them up bad. Get wrecked. That's all I got to say. Alright. Smack him and finish? 53? No. Oh, it was close though. It was close. Does not look like we can actually do anything from here. And he's gonna get his move. Oh, he's going for it. Oh, pretty nasty hit. Okay, okay. We can we can deal with that, I suppose. And up next, it's archer time, folks. 47% miss and out of bullets, I guess, or out of arrows, if you will. Okay, we're gonna move up here and we're going for the decapitation. 56, we said good day. And we'll get out of the way, and up next, some more archer, hot archer on archer action here. Well, maybe not archer on archer, but victory! We took a little bit of armor damage, took a little bit of health damage on, which one was it? On Paulson, but he's like, you know what guys, I do this for a living, I develop the game, I can handle it, I can handle, bring it on, let me take some damage, I'm fine. Totally fine, so there we go guys. There we go. The most damage done was done by Darren with a double decapitation. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yep, yep, it was. It was 295 to the 280 of Captain Odie, who did amazing, by the way. And Twiggy MC doing 208 like a boss. All right, looks like we got some more stuff to sell. I like that. I like that a lot. All right, cool, cool. All right, um, let's leave. And I guess we get to head right back into town. It is nighttime. We do have enough crowns to make it through. But we have to do a caravan, or at least that was the plan. I'm about 12 minutes in. I'm hoping the caravan hasn't left yet, but it, there's a pretty good chance that it might have. So what I think I'm going to do... Hmm, well, we can't sell anything during the night. It's almost dawn. I don't know where the militia ran off to, but... Could have used their help. Could have definitely used their help. Oh no, the caravan's gone. Do you have a caravan? Nope. Well, we just missed out on a little bit of cash monies there. Actually, a pretty decent supply of it. I'm a little sad at this point, but that's okay. Alright, we are brokish right now. We need to, uh... Need to get some stuff sold here. I'm gonna sell some of the more... Or the less broken stuff, rather. There we go, we have 180. I could get some more armor. I don't hate the idea, but I think we need the money. Oh, there's actually some uh, tools and supplies there. That would be really nice to have, too. Don't think we can afford it, though. Alright, I'm gonna go with... Uh, I'm not gonna go with the Gambison. I want to, but I don't think I can afford it right now. Alright, not gonna destroy that yet. Not yet. And on this side, reach Menarkin. I guess we could do that. Alright, where was Menarkin? It wasn't way down there. It was. Okay, and the quickest way to it would actually be that way. Okay, well, I guess that's going to be our goal. We're going to try to avoid combat until we get there and get paid. It should only take us about a day to do, and that will probably break off the episode. Once we accomplish that goal, again, I'm hoping to avoid getting ambushed or attacked by any sort of horrible orcs or bandits. And yeah, I think we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good. Day 8, we have 11 Battle Brothers that are still rocking. I believe we even have some level ups to do, too. We do. I should be doing those right now. I'm going to get a little closer to Menarkin before I do that. And we'll see how things progress from there. To move along, it looks like we are actually able to repair some more stuff. That being said, I think I'm going to tag that one and that one for repair. And we'll continue on our little path of awesomeness and adventuritude. I know, adventuritude is not a word, guys. But it's fine. It's totally fine. Alright, I thought we could probably cross over right there. Well, I suppose we could take a look. Doesn't hurt to look, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty expensive stuff overall. I mean, the padded surcoat, eh, could probably get it, but nah. And I like the male coif, but we're not going to coif it up right yet. Not just yet. But we are on our way. 
Things seem to be going pretty good. I wouldn't mind going to Hamduran at some point and getting some stuff done too. I'm not sure if we visited there. I've already lost track of where I've been and where I haven't been because I'm playing on my own as well, guys. I told you it was going to happen. I was so glad to see that they had individual save points. It, like, if this was only, like, a playthrough and, you know, like, autosave all the way through, it would still be a great game, and don't get me wrong, but I can't tell you how happy I am that they don't just force you into that. I could probably fight those guys at this point, but I don't really want to fight during nighttime, and I would like it to be a little bit closer to our destination. We're relatively close, and I think at this point we might be strong enough to deal with the Frenzied Axe's Den. So that is a possibility from Menarkin once we get there. We're pretty close. We are pretty darn close. I'm going to cut the corner right here. Be like, yeah, that was a good move. Uh, it didn't even seem like the road carrier that I came off of. It's like, no, we'll give you some leniency since you're an amazing group of mercenaries. We love you, Bumpy's Battlers. We love you. So, there it is. We have made it to Menarkin, and actually, that took a little bit less time than I thought. 210 crowns, I will take it, and I will go into town, and there is no contracts available right now. That is a bit unfortunate. Or we have 200, and eh, we're doing okay for most stuff. I think we're going to sell a little bit more. I'm not going to get any more Battle Brothers yet. We're going to save up for some, hopefully, better equipment, if at all possible. I'm going to go over to the other town over here. Actually, we might try Berland Castle. Now, it's going to be a little bit more... Um, oh, what is the word? Everything's going to be way more expensive, but we should have a lot more military-focused equipment that we can buy from there. So, that being said, maybe we can spend a little bit of this 387 that we have laying around and get a little something-something for us, because we definitely need it. Alright, here we are at Berland Castle. And as you see, amazing, amazing stuff. The billhook is available, and I'm exceptionally tempted to go grab it, but I don't think that's the play. I think the play right now is maybe to buy some padded leather, get ourselves a little bit more uh, protection. And I really want to buy a kite shield, but I don't think it's worth it right now. And that's way too expensive for me. I am not going to spend 143 for tools and supplies. If this was 189 or something like that, I might actually get it. But it's just a little bit too expensive right now. Well, you know what? I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to sell the Warhammer. I'm going to buy the Billhook. It was still a pretty big cost to me, but you know what? I'm okay with that. So what we're going to do now is we have to think of who we can use that will actually benefit from this because we have so many backline guys who can't do anything I think Kippy Kips what was I doing with you buddy what was I doing with your perks let's throw it in the offense you know what that's fine we're gonna like Kippy Kips since he's kind of like a, a backup individual right now anyway like I send him in when and where I can but not all the time we're gonna actually take the axe out of his inventory I'll put these things down here and we're gonna have him as a a midline guy so ideally if we're looking like right here Here's going to be the frontline guy, we're going to have Kippy Kips here, and then we're going to have our archers there. That's going to be the plan. So if all that works out, we should be looking really, really good. He doesn't need super heavy armor being in the medium level of the uh, combat, the secondary level. I think Paulson's going to be our boss since he is using the two-handed weapon and he doesn't have a shield. We're going to give him the padded leather, which is a little bit more armor. We're going to go with, um, let's see... Darren also is using a two-handed weapon, so we're going to give him the the gambus in there. And do anybody else need a padded surcoat? Is that going to be an upgrade for anyone? I'd like to keep these guys in their um, woven tunics and stuff of that nature. Simply put, the woven tunics and the linen tunics, uh, they do not add any additional fatigue. Now, the woven is clearly better than the linen, but eh, I don't know. I suppose even with a four... I mean, Odie's rocking the padded surcoat, and he's not really having any negative effects. So maybe we'll go with Twiggy MC, can have that, and then we'll go and we'll toss this up here, we'll give him that one. And yeah, I like that, I like that actually quite a bit. Okay, so Kippy Kips is now a second liner, and that's going to be good, that's going to be just fine. Alright, we're going to leave this place, and what we're going to do now is pause the game... 
We're going to make our way up to Hamruden. And then once we make it there, we are going to break off the episode. I was going to do it when we made it over here, but we got here so quickly. I figure if we make it at least 20, 25 minutes in, we'll be good. And then this is going to do it until Saturday, folks. I know, I know. I'm sad too. I want to play it. And I still might. I mean, I can't promise you guys I'm not going to play more. Uh, there's still the possibility on Friday I'm going to play more. But the goal is to only play Dying Light. If I f somehow manage to beat Dying Light in the allotted time that I have to record, then yeah, you'll see me playing this game a little bit. It would not be... Oh, gosh. It would not behoove me to go off the road here. You know what? I'm actually going to probably just break out the episode here. We'll see if we can't hunt down the ambushers at night. It's kind of risky. We might wait till daytime to do it, and we'll just follow them until then. And then we'll get into a fight. We'll see how the bill hook works in the very next episode, and we'll do some murder. Now, the bill hook does tremendous, tremendous damage, and it can attack from one line behind the front. It does 70 to 100 damage. If you take a look at this two-handed axe, it only does 35 to 65, and that is pretty amazing as is. Um, Kibby Kips has his mace that does 35 to 55. Eh, I think our, our sword does pretty close. Yeah, 85 to 110. So think of the sword guy, but from the back line. It's pretty impressive. It's really impressive, guys. Either way, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share it. Remember to go back to episode one and choose your name if you want to sign up and become a battle brother. I don't know how many deaths or casualties we'll have throughout or how many people I will be replacing. But there is still the potential that you could be a named individual. There's still about seven or eight guys left. Maybe maybe ten, I don't know. I, I, I'm bad at glancing and looking at the numbers. I'll have a definitive number of people in the list for the very next episode. Either way, folks, that's going to do it. I will see you next time with more Battle Brothers. Until then, thanks for stopping by the Freak Show. My name's Bumpy McSquiggums, and I will see you later. <laughs>